uh, all right, so um, here we are going to start our uh, one day seminar. So hello everyone, I am exploration geophysicist to Zarif, having more than 10 years of experience in different exploration and production companies. I am also serving as a seismic interpreter and pet software training in ZPATRO training and consulting. So here uh, we will uh, discuss a big and huge topic that is basically interpretation and evaluation for hydrocarbon exploration and production, all right? So this topic is basically a complete process where you can uh, start your project and how you can get and how you can extract hydrocarbons uh, within us that are basically present within a subsurface, right? <clears throat> uh, in this training session, we will try to touch uh, each uh, topic so that we can summarize uh, each theme, each technical term so that uh, uh, we can see that how we are going to conduct our uh, seismic survey and text and at the end how we can uh, dig in uh, to our specific reservoir and get the hydrocarbons. All right. So uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> all right. So uh, basically the thing is that uh, initially we are going to carry out the survey, right? And this survey is uh, basically uh, the 2G survey or 3G survey. But initially we are after the field work, after geological field work, we are going to uh, carry out the simple survey, which is very, uh, you can say that uh, low in budget and we are going to see the real subsurface picture. So this is basically known as two dimensional survey from where we can get the two dimensional picture, or you can say that the cross sections of your subsurface search. So here in that case for a specific uh, interpretation to get the data set. So here there are some technical terms that uh, we are going to see that is basically the fold, right? So fold is basically the two types. The one is basically the geological fold and another one is basically the seismic fold. So what is basically the seismic fold? I am not considering the geological fold here, which are basically uh, developed due to tectonic uh, forces, all right? So here we are going to discuss the fold, why it is important and what is basically the seismic fold. Basically the seismic fold is, uh, uh, is the basically the subsurface point where we can get the maximum number of, uh, you can say that where the seismic waves are uh, hitting on that particular uh, point on the maximum, uh, you can say that amount, all right? So this is basically the number of times the common depth point is image, all right? So this is basically the thing from where we can uh, design the service so that we can capture our subsurface reservoir, right? For example, if you want to catch a big fish, then you can design a net with a huge spacing. If you are interested in order to catch a small fish, then you are going to make your uh, net uh, with the small, or you can say that the small or a very low spacing uh, uh, of your thread, all right? So this is the basically the way, this is basically the objective that how you are going to interpret it, all right? So uh, the formula, the metrical formula of fold is basically the half of C, del X square and del G and del S. So what are basically all these things? So these are basically the things where the C is basically the number of channels. So what are number of channels? We are going to see it. The picket interval, the picket interval is basically the uh, interval where we are going to uh, also visualize in our next uh, slides. The del G is basically the geophone interval and the del S is basically the source interval. So this is the formula where we are going to 
sector subsurface, you can say that in order to map your subsurface reservoirs. So whatever it's 2D project, 3D project or 4D project. So due to, uh, they have some uh, little bit differences in 3D fold and you can say that the 4D depending on your survey after some and a specific uh, uh, particular time, all right? So uh, here in that case, this is basically the thing from where we can design as, as, as well as we are going to calculate uh, our economic power, all right? So due to depending upon on your economic budget, all right, and your subsurface reservoir target, we are going to formulate all these things in order to capture our subsurface reservoir, right? So uh, basically uh, we have the shooting types, which are basically the two types, right? So we have a split shooting. So here we have a two lines there. You can see there the first, the first one line is basically uh, the surface location while basically the basic, uh, the below line that is basically uh, the below with the surface line is your seismic reservoir, or you can say that your subsurface lithology. So in that case, we have a source point at the middle of the geophones, all right? So in that case, when we get, when the source generate the seismic waves and we will get the information in the form of seismic waves, then you can see we will get a data set in the form of dots. You can see there, all right? So in split shooting, so when you are going to uh, target another thing, all right, so in order to cover, in order to image all this line, so we will move whole geometry up to one step, all right? So in that case, we will again get our seismic data set and get the dots, all right? So again, we will move on, all right, and again, get the data set then we will again move on and get the data set. So here you can see the data set, the dots are basically the data set. The more and more data set you have, it's mean that you have more and more control within a subsurface geology. So when you have more and more control, then you can easily interpret then you can easily image your subsurface reservoir, all right? So now these all uh, dots are basically known as stacking chart, where we will get the first seismic uh, data set, which consists of uh, uh, too much noises, all right? Also, these noises depend upon, uh, you can say that the geology and your surface locality, all right? So this is the way that how you are going to collect your data, because the process is that the seismic interpretation, all of your interpretation is just like a field of wheat, all right? So if you have a wheat field, you are go there, all right? You can see the wheat. So when you collect seed by seed, so it's mean that you are doing seismic data acquisition. So when you will get all these seeds, then you can sort out uh, you were, uh, you can say that uh, the eating material as well as the raw materials, right? So this sorting is basically known as the seismic data processing. At the end, we will make, uh, uh, you can say that the breads, you can uh, pastries and sandwiches, different type of bread is, right? So these are basically known as the seismic data interpretation. So in that case, the whole topic is too much lore. We will not cover all these things, but we will generally uh, show to you that how all these things uh, work in your, you can see that uh, when we will get uh, the seismic data information, all right? And in our upcoming course, that is basically the petrol software training. So in that course, we will also see practically that how we are going to manage our data set, lower our data set, interpret our data set, and model our data set. So in that particular course, 
we will see that how we are going to use the tool that is software and what is basically the complete workflow for static modeling. All right. So why we are discussing these folds and split shooting? Because when you have a good fold data set, so you can see a good image of your seismic data set. So when you have a good image of your seismic data set, then it means that you can easily interpret your data set, all right? So this one is basically the fold coverage where at the midpoint, you will get maximum number of uh, you can say that the value of the four. So it means that at the center of your seismic section, you will get high quality of your data set rather than, or you can say that when you will compare at the end and the uh, uh, initial and the end side of your data set, the mid one was very uh, 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 or very good at the uh, uh, all other is basically the low quality of your data set, right? So these are basically the four where we will get the maximum number there. And from this formula, we can also uh, design our budget depending upon on your, on your budget, you can uh, easily calculate all these values. All right. Now, for example, if you are not interested in order to move your whole geometries one with one interval, all right? So you can design up to two interval. You can skip, you will first uh, collect your data set, all right? When you will move on, then you can move to two points, all right? So here you can see when we will move to two points, so here you can get the data set just like that. And you can see at the bottom, the dots are basically appearing. And these dot are, dots are basically your raw seismic data set, which will contain noises, all right? So in, during seismic data processing, we will remove these noises. When you are going to remove these noises, then you will get a refined data set, all right? So remember that thing that we can we cannot remove noises 100%. This small portion will be there. If you have a good system, if you have a even good experience, it's still a minimum, you can say that a uh, number of noises will be there, all right, because we can reduce, minimize the noises, but we cannot completely, uh, uh, you can say that, uh, uh, remove the noises from our data set, all right? So in that case, you can get a maximum number of fold and which is basically the two is, and again, uh, the fold in that case is at the middle location, which is basically uh, the example of split shooting, right? If you will get a, a maximum fold within these two uh, uh, at the midpoint, so it means that you have a split shooting there, right? What is basically the end shooting? So in end shooting, we have basically a one source point and at the front, you can see the four dew falls. So when the seismic waves propagates within a subsurface, then we will get a data set in the form of dots you can see there. Now, when whole geometry move on, then you can see, we will add, you can see there, we will add a single dew from at the back side of our source point, right? And again, we are going to collect our data set. Then we will move on and add one dew phone again, right? And so on. So here in that case, you can see, we will repeat this process. You can see there at the end, the number of dew phones, right? Uh, at the left side and the right side of the source is basically equal in amount. And this spread is basically known as symmetric spread, all right? Because this is the basically representation of your data symmetry. So when you have a data symmetry, in that case, you will get a more and more four. So here in that case, we will again move on, all right? And then you can see there we will uh, going to collect our data set, right? Now, in that case, after getting some values, we are removing one dew from at the front of our source point, all right? So one dew from remove, all right? Then we will get a data set again. One dew from remove and get our data set. And again, one dew from remove and get our data set. So this is how we have a stick. All right, and this stake is basically the maximum number of point or too much there, right? 
So you can see the forward coverage is too much high as compared to spread shooting, right? At the midpoint, we can get more and more data. When you will get more and more data, then it means you have a data control on your data set. When you have a data control on your data set, then it means you can easily visualize and interpret your data set. And at the end, you can easily mark the valuable location on the surface of the earth, right? So this is how we are doing these things, all right? So this is basically the end shooting, all right? So in the spread shooting, you can see the symmetric spread there. And at the right side, you can see end on shooting, which is completely asymmetric spread. But in that case, asymmetry uh, give us a huge amount of and good quality of data set, while the spread shooting is not giving us too much high quality, all right? So you can see if we are going to make a graph, so you can see the difference there. At the left side and the right side, we will get too much good quality of data there, all right? While in that case, we will get a portion of good data set, all right? So uh, this is why we are going to prefer all these things during size of data acquisition, all right? So at the left side, the uh, you can see uh, uh, the gentle angle there, while the stupor angle is basically a representation of asthmatic spread, which is end on shooting. So why we are going to discuss that so we can easily get our data set, all right? Now, so what are basically the pickets and CDPs? So pickets are basically the uh, points uh, you can see there. Uh, at the top of the surface, all right, where we are going to collect our data set, while CDPs are the common depth points, where common depth points are basically the midpoint of a specific two or three, or you can say that two or six uh, uh, geophones, all right? So the number of, uh, maximum number of hitting point is basically known as CDPs, all right? And there is another point which is also known as CMPs. CMPs mean common midpoint. So common midpoints are basically on the surface location of the earth, while the CDPs are basically the depth locations, all right? So in that case, CDPs are just like that, and we will get the forward coverage. Uh, uh, so, uh, here in that case, the uh, 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 distance or uh, you can say that the uh, space uh, spacing in between two pickets are known as picket interval. All these things matter. Why? Because all these things depend upon on your budget, all right? So uh, during silent data acquisition, because it is a very expensive job. So you can see all these things, all these, you should remember all these things in your mind. After that, you can discuss, and after that you can design uh, your, uh, you can say that uh, the information, all right? So what is basically the receiver? So you can see that the receiver, the distance between in geophones are basically the, uh, receiver interval and the source interval is basically the distance in between uh, two sources are basically known as the source interval. So these are basically, uh, uh, you can say that uh, uh, simple uh, information, all right, so that we can get our data set because our time is very limited. So we cannot discuss huge thing there, all right? So we are going to show you that how all these things going to be work. So now uh, I'm going to show you some field pictures. So these are basically the recorder, all right? Which is also known as seismic recorders. Cables are connected within that, all right? And now you can see these recorder are basically a specific antenna system, all right? Which receive the signals, all right? So uh, now, we have a geophones group, all right? So within a group, we have a large number of geophones there, all right? And uh, we have geophone connector plugs, all right? So these plugs are connected with geophones and we are going to record our data set, all right? So uh, the next is you can see the sim similar things, the cables, which are basically uh, the geophones that are basically uh, connected in uh, these uh, within a, a surface of the earth so that we can uh, get our uh, data set uh, very easily, all right? 
So this is basically the jumper where the all geo phones are at the end connected with these jumpers, right? So now we have a sources. So we have different type of sources. The most common sources is basically the vibrator, right? So vibrator is basically consists of hydraulic plate and it this plate is basically connected with the hydraulic system. When it touches the ground and vibrate, then the seismic waves propagate within the subsurface and at the end with the help of geophones we are going to collect our data set all right mm. so uh, you can see there so it touches the ground there all right so in that case we have a uh, the seismic waves are propagating this one is basically the hydraulic plate from where we are going to getting our uh, uh, data set so these are basically the source points all right these are basically the source uh, uh, thing right so not uh, uh, you can say that uh, uh, the information which is basically related with a receiving part all right so initially we will get the seismic data set right so this seismic data set for getting is seismic acquisition and this fold is very mad so if you are working if you have a project which is basically related with 3d all right seismic then 3d seismic have a specific fold there, right? From where we can get the uh, uh, source points and also we can uh, get uh, the, uh, you can say that uh, 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 the cross lines there, the in lines there, and we are also going to design a budget, uh, which is basically uh, design a survey, which is basically uh, depending upon in your whole budget. All right, so now, I'm going to because the course is uh, too much big, so it's uh, a very. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, show you that how all these uh, things are going to be work and how uh, these uh, things are uh, we can handle in uh, any software, all right? So, uh, When we get to our seismic data set, or, <clears throat> all right. So, okay. So I am going to uh, uh, show you. All right, so I'm going to show you uh, the seismic modeling. So what is basically the seismic modeling, all right? Or you can say that the seismic simulation, all right? So the thing is that uh, uh, when you are going to get the seismic data set, all right, and uh, uh, you are going to process your seismic data set because seismic processing is completely, you can say that uh, high technical thing, all right? So it is basically the mathematical thing, all right? Mathematics background, mathematics is involved because seismic data set is huge data set. We are going to set up all this data set in the form of matrices that you have read, read in, you can say that in your uh, in the, uh, 10th grade or 12th grade, all right? Because it is basically a huge data set. So due to, uh, different techniques of machine learning so we will uh, refine uh, we will try to refine our data set uh, in the step of seismic data processing all right and then at the end we will get uh, the seismic data interpretation all right so uh, the seismic data interpretation is very important technique in order to visualize your subsurface cross sections or your subsurface models, all right? So we are in that case, we will discussing the 1D and the 2D forward modeling, all right? So 1D forward modeling is when you will get a seismic data set and you have uh, information of your well data set that are basically pres present at the end at the surrounding areas, then here we will get uh, 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 in that well location, in that specific petrophysical information, we will get the velocities, all right? And these velocities we will get from sonic log, all right? Then we have, uh, you can see that, uh, okay. 
the density information from where we can get the information from density log. Then the software computed a series, which is basically a reflectivity series, or uh, you can say that uh, 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 um, RC coefficient, all right, which is basically the division of your the density caustic impedance, all right, and you can uh, uh, a caustic impedance of the first layer and the caustic impedance of uh, second layer. Then we will generate a wavelet, all right, which is basically known as the source wavelet, and we are going to convolve this wavelet with reflection coefficient series and get a model which is known as 1d forward modeling so this all technique we are going to see in our upcoming course that is basically the battle software training all right so in this battle software training we are going to see that how we are going to how uh, and why we are going to make the seismic synthetic seismogram all right so this one is basically the synthetic uh reflected series all right uh which is also known as the 1d uh forward modeling all right so we have basically the different frequencies there uh we are is started from 15 hertz till 75 hertz so we prefer in seismic data that we will get a data set or refine our data set, which are basically in high frequencies rather than low frequencies because high frequencies capture each thin beds, while the low frequencies cannot capture thin beds. So if you can see a thick bedding of your thick bedding in your seismic section, that it means that you have low frequency data set. So if you have, a, a, you are going to see a small beds there, thin beds there, right? It means that you have a good quality of your data set, which is basically the high frequencies. But the problem is when the seismic waves propagates within a subsurface, then the high frequencies absorb or attenuate, right? While we will only have low frequencies. So during seismic data processing, we are going to reintroduce, we are going to enhance uh, the high frequency so that we can get a good image, right? So uh, these high frequencies are very uh, low penetration. So due to low penetration, we can't see. So when we can't see, it is difficult to detect the thin beds and the deep information. So during seismic data processing, the main theme of the seismic data processing is to enhance uh, the visualization power. So visualization power is your frequency. If you are enhancing your high frequencies, then it means that you are getting a good result, all right? So now here you can see uh, uh, the convolution process, which is basically uh, the reflection, uh, reflection coefficient series and the synthetic seismogram, which is 10 to 19 hertz up to 75 hertz, all right? So uh, these are basically uh, the different waves types that are basically the summed wavelet, Ricker wavelet, Clouder wavelet, up to you that which kind of wavelet you are using in seismic data acquisition as well as in order to make your model. So in that picture, in the first picture, you can see the thin bed is there, all right, due to high frequency. But in first picture, you can't detect the thin beds here, here, and here, right? So you can't uh, detect all this information because we have low frequency there. So therefore, we are going to try to enhance in our high frequencies, all right? So now the thing is that how we are going to generate all these things. So initially we have seismic interpretation. So when you are doing the seismic interpretation, you have seismic sections. When you have seismic sections, after different processing, we are going to make, we are going to try the geological cross-sections, all right? So in the 2D forward modeling, so we have initially geological sections and at the end, we will get the seismic section. So the first thing is known as seismic interpretation, while the second thing is 2D forward modeling. From where you can uh, interpret your seismic data set and get the geological information just like velocity, permeability, hydrocarbon saturation, water contact, oil, gas 
contact or right so all these things are geological features which is basically known as seismic interpretation but at the second step if you have a geological information just like density velocity porosity permeability is all these things and you are going to make seismic section with the help of well data set then this one is basically the reverse process and this process is basically known as 2d forward modeling so initially you can see that for example this one is our subsurface uh geology all right so in the 35 hertz wavelet we can get the seismic image from our geological cross section that is basically you can say that the uh, well inversion right this is also basically you can say that the well inversion you are inverting your well data set into your seismic data set if i we are going to increase the frequency then you can see a good image result is there because frequencies are increasing high frequency mean good quality of data set all right now 100 hertz again good quality is there all right so this one is basically the seismic waves from where we are going to get our data set all right so uh at the end we are going to see when we are going to interpret all these things then our main objective is to mark the well location so for example this one is basically our subsurface geological structure all right we we have an anticline or you can say that the fold is there all right so we have a different lithology that is mississippi mississippi and jurassic lower cretaceous and the upper cretaceous all right so the thing is that there is a well on the hinge point all right so hinge point from where you can get maximum amount of your uh, hydrocarbons then we have a limb point 12 all right in order to see the extension right which is also known as the appraisal well and we have proposed mississippian test from on that location so that we can get the information maybe there will be there in that lithology so all these things we are going to discuss in our uh, in a very good detail in petal software that we will uh start from our next month so in this in our next month course we will see all practical values in the petal software all right that and we will also share with you the data set and the presentations because this course is up to three to four days complete course and in that course we are going to see the seismic data interpretation seismic data management data qc uh, uh wells correlation workflow for aesthetic modeling and most importantly that how we are going to use our petal software so for now uh i have tried to summarize my lecture and pick very important point because time is very limited so we will discuss all these things in petal software uh course in very deep detail so thank you very much.